A reading from the letter of St. James. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister has nothing to wear and has no food for the day, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat well, but you do not give them the necessities of the body, what good is it? So also faith of itself, if it does not, ha- if it does not have works, is dead. Indeed, someone might say, You have faith and I have works. Demonstrate your faith to me without works, and I will demonstrate my faith to you from my works. The word of the Lord. I must admit that when I see this reading, I always think back to my freshman year in college. My good friend, who I used to argue with all the time, was kind of a Bible fundamentalist, you could say. And he always insisted that faith alone saves. And I'd say, listen, it says it in James, faith without works is dead, the conversation's over. But as I've grown older and maybe a little wiser, I've come to read this passage with a little bit of hesitation, maybe even a little worry, because I have people in my life believe it or not, who look at me and they say, oh, that Jude, he's just, he's so holy. He's, he's always smiling, he's always happy, he's always so prayerful. He, he gets to chapel early, he's just such a nice guy. And, you know, he's holy, he's, he's a holy person. And after a while, I might start to listen to them. And I think, you know what, I'm pretty holy. <laughs> I get to chapel early, I do these things, I'm set. What else is there? But then on my darker days, I come to the reality that I'm not always holy. Every day I travel to school and sometimes I walk and I can't tell you how many times I've walked past a homeless person. And while I haven't ever given them food or shelter or clothing, because I don't have these things to give, sometimes I don't even offer a kind look or a a kind word, or even a small prayer. Even in our own house, there have been many times when I've seen a brother who's in pain, who's suffering, who's in need of some charity, but I've turned my eyes and ignored them because I have something else to do, because I don't have the time, or I have studies to do. Truly, if faith If salvation depended upon works alone, then who among us would be worthy? But I don't mean to depress you with my sad life. (laughs) And I I don't think that James here is trying to guilt people into convincing them to, to do more volunteer work or to spend more money at the food bank or to do these things. Rather, James is pointing to a very deep human truth that what we believe is deeply connected to what we do, that there are beliefs, there are passions in our life that drive us and they shape us into who we are. In fact, you don't have to be a Christian to do this. You don't have to be religious. I think every person in the world today has some belief or some notion of what is good for them and that shapes it. It might be the belief in a just society It might be the belief in more money. It might be the belief in themselves and their own abilities. So the question becomes, how do we tell, how can we know if our belief is good or not? Well, in the Gospel today, Jesus gives us a very radical example. He says, whoever wishes to lose his life will save it. Whoever wishes to lose his life will save it. This is a very complicated thing, and I think it's hard to unpack in a few minutes, but for me, the only way I can understand this is from the perspective of a lover. Does the 
the man who is deeply in love with a woman ever regret the amount of time and energy he spends trying to please her? Does he ever regret all of the money he spent and all of the dates he took her on and all of the times he's, he's focused on her? No. Does a parent who just had a baby ever regret the loss of freedom that comes from raising another person, from bathing them, from feeding them, from taking care of them and nourishing them? At the end of the day, I think that parent would say that all those sacrifices are worth it because in the end they have something stronger. They have a communion with this person, a deep love for this little baby that God has given them. And so Jesus is suggesting that if we devote our lives in selflessness, if we devote our lives to love, to caring for the others, then we will gladly give up our own needs. We will gladly devote ourselves to the other. And in the end, we will find something even greater than we ever thought imaginable. And in this mystery of God's mercy and love, we will no longer debate about whether or not you're worthy or whether or not you're actually holy, but simply reflect upon the fact that we are loved. And this love, my brothers and sisters, is truly worth basing our life on. It's truly worth devoting ourselves completely.